Hey guys, you're watching Theo Joe Tech. I am Joe. In this video, I thought I would go over some best practices, tips, tricks, stuff you should be doing to increase your security online and on your computer. Now, this isn't going to be a completely comprehensive list, so if I miss something, don't freak out. You can let us know in the comments if you have any other tips, but these are just things I think you should be doing that I thought of. Now, first things first is two-factor authentication. If you don't know what this is, basically this requires you to type in not one, but a second password when you log into certain accounts. This can be in the form of a text message that sends a code. So even if someone steals your password, they don't have your phone with the second password that gets sent every time different. So they're not gonna be able to get into your account. I think this is invaluable on accounts that you really need to secure, like your email account, bank account, stuff like that. See if you can enable two-factor authentication so you can get the maximum security and it'll stop even people who have your password. Next, when you do set passwords for sites, you want long and strong passwords. This is because when a site stores the password, hopefully they do what's called hashing and salting, which you don't really have to know a lot about it. It basically just encrypts the password. However, if someone downloads that password database after hacking into it, they're gonna try and decrypt all the passwords in that database. If you have a very long and strong password, which means it has uppercase, lowercase numbers, and special characters in it, there's probably a good chance that that person is not going to be able to crack your password, even if they're able to crack others with weaker passwords. If you have a really weak password that's short, only has lowercase characters, or only has letters and numbers, no special characters, there's a good chance that that hacker is gonna be able to really quickly get your password, even if it's encrypted. So the encryption only helps if you help yourself with a long password. And when I say a long password, well, a lot of people will tell you different things. I would say at least 10 characters. If you can get 14 or more, that would be best. Really, there's no upper limit to how long you should make a password. The most secure passwords are probably 20 characters long or more, but a lot of websites don't let you go that long. So I'd say if you're at least 10 characters or so, you should be good as long as you're using all different character types, such as uppercase, as I mentioned, lowercase, numbers, and special characters. Next, you should be definitely using unique passwords on every site, especially important sites, because a lot of times what a hacker will do, they're not gonna get into Wells Fargo or Google or those big sites with huge security but they will get into that forum you signed up for five years ago and use the same password, and then they'll crack that code and use it and try it on any other sites where you use the same login, and that way they might be able to get into your secure accounts and high security accounts using your weak accounts. Now there's a few ways you can get a unique password. You can either use a password manager that could generate passwords, like LastPass or KeePass, that way you don't have to remember them, or what you can do is basically come up with an algorithm in your head, a method for creating a password based on the name of the site or some other characteristic. That way you can kind of remember it without having to remember the password. Using unique passwords is probably one of the most important things you should be doing for security. So I highly recommend you definitely do that. Now I mentioned password managers. What these do is basically store a database of your passwords and hopefully encrypt them. Some might be LastPass. This is actually an online password manager. There's also offline ones like KeePass. And I'd probably recommend not using the built-in password managers in your browser, because a lot of times those aren't secure and they're not encrypted unless you specifically set it to be like that. So I would definitely get a standalone software and service that is specifically designed for storing passwords securely. If you're gonna use an online password manager like LastPass, it's absolutely essential that you take extreme steps to make sure that it is going to be secure. By this, I mean you need to use two-factor authentication if you have an online password manager. And this is because if they get into that account, if a hacker gets into that account, they're going to have all your stuff. So if you're going to use two-factor authentication on any website, use it on LastPass or your other manager. Also, on your password manager, use an exceptionally long password, 20 plus characters, upper, lowercase, numbers, 
special characters, all that, because you want that to be your strongest password ever. And obviously that's because you need that password to be strongest because it's gonna protect all your other passwords. And the same goes for an offline manager as well. Next, let's talk about encryption for your whole hard drive or device. There's a few options. The first one's BitLocker. This one comes with Windows. Usually this is what I'll do just because it's more convenient. Next, you'll have TrueCrypt, which is probably only for advanced users. And if you already know about TrueCrypt, you probably know how to use that anyway. So I'm not gonna get into that. Next, you can actually get hardware-based encryption. A lot of SSDs will have this, where the SSD, if you turn it on, it will encrypt on the fly. It's not software encryption through the OS, so you don't lose any data transfer speeds. It's all done on the hard drive. And usually this is available in higher end SSDs. They might not all have it, but this is probably a really easy solution. All you have to do is enable it, and then you're pretty much good to go. And then of course there's phone encryption on my Android phone and all my other phones. I enable full system encryption, so if anyone steals it, they can't get anything on it. And you might think, well, then you can't get it back if someone steals it because then you can't use the tracker. Well, I would rather just lose the phone and be sure that no one can access it than lose the phone, have a small chance of getting it back, but then the thief has full access to everything on it. I would not want that at all. And the same would go for a laptop. I encrypt it fully. I don't care if I lose the laptop, to be honest, just as long as they don't get all the stuff on it. And I'll make a point for BitLocker. People are gonna say, well, Microsoft and the NSA well, you know what? I'm just encrypting for the person who's gonna steal my computer and try to get into it. I'm not trying to protect against the government because chances are if they get hold of your computer, they're probably gonna get in and get whatever they want anyway. Now next, let's talk about VPNs. What this does is funnels all your data through a virtual private network, which encrypts it so no one can see it if they're snooping in, even your internet service provider. Now you have to pay for a VPN. Don't get a free one because a lot of them are sketchy, compromised, they're actually looking at your stuff. Because remember, if something is free, you're the product. VPNs are actually pretty affordable, usually just a few dollars a month and definitely worth it, especially if you're traveling using those hotel Wi-Fi's that you don't know anything about, I definitely recommend getting a VPN. Further talking about encryption, I recommend getting the browser plugin HTTPS Everywhere. This is gonna force encrypted connections on any website that supports SSL. This is most websites, but a lot of times if you go to it, it's not going to default to the encrypted connection. So this is just going to redirect you to the encrypted connection if it's possible, such as YouTube, Gmail, all that good stuff. So you don't even have to think about it, it'll do it automatically. And finally, another good plugin to have on your browser is something that's gonna block scripts from displaying on pages unless you whitelist them, such as NoScript or Microblock, because a lot of times what malware and compromised sites will do is you won't even realize that there's a malicious script running on a website, especially if it was a compromised on a legitimate website, and then they'll be able to do some funky stuff with your browser and install malware or have you download something. But this is gonna block any scripts and prevent anything from running that you don't know about. This is probably for more advanced users because for a whitelist script blocker, most websites without scripts are gonna not work. So you're gonna have to go through and enable on the plugin which scripts you wanna allow on that site. But after a while, you're gonna be able to not worry about it because you'll just have enabled the scripts on the websites you visit most often. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I hope you guys found all these useful. I'm sure there are a lot that you already knew about, but Maybe for you people who aren't really security conscious, this will set you straight. If you guys want, you can leave a comment. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. And you can also like the video if you found it useful so I know to make more videos like this. If you want to check out some other videos on the right hand side, you can either click them or look in the description for the same link, such as if you're on a phone. And you can also subscribe because I try to make new videos three times a week, so it should be worth it. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys, so thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.